Did I embarrass you? Yeah. Ron loves a home, you love a homely kind of woman. No, I do not. So you want to someone? <laughs> I thought you were probably looking for like someone you were like, can I see her in a house coat? <laughs> That's not true. Can she make a good cornbread? That's not true. That's not true at all. <laughs> but also have a career. That's not true at all. I didn't want, that's it. I wanted her to be nice and like kind of like, I guess homely. <laughs> I, I knew it. <laughs> homely. <laughs> homely. All right, how do we meet? Hinge. We met on Hinge. Yeah. Okay, so I was on my way back from a cross country road trip and I stopped in New Orleans and I was like, let's swipe. And we matched and you were like, oh, like I haven't seen you around, like, or something. I was like. way smoother than that. And that, <laughs> and the fact that you did this, just not. <laughs> <laughs> you said something um, like that. You are like, when am I gonna see you? And I was like, what about tonight? I was scared. I didn't think I was scared. To me, I wasn't like, it wasn't murder scared. It wasn't that level of scared fear but it was kind of like a, a, a rob scare. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, you thought I was gonna rob you. Yeah. And I then like we just saw each other every day after that, and that's our story. And now we're getting married. And I think the big thing, like you know what I'm saying, we moved in together. You moved in with me. Don't after, make it like, sound that way. That's this, not that true. That was the big decision in our relationship, though. It came like at the day three. That is partially true. Yeah. So I was staying in an Airbnb, and so I'm gonna go back to New York, and then like, we'll figure it out. And you were like, I don't want you to leave. No, I said no. You were like, wrong. don't go, baby. That's you no. <laughs> oh my God, no. <laughs> no. I was not living here. Yes, you was. You was living here for a while. Okay, yes, I had a key. <laughs> I had a key. <laughs> and I you had a key. Staying. You were coming and going as you please. <laughs> I had a key. And about? I was staying here. But I wasn't living, living here. You had groceries. You had your name on the milk. What are you talking about? I had a home. That you did not live in. No. <laughs> <laughs> I had a home. Okay. Okay. I think my mom was supportive. I don't think she ever thought I was crazy. There were some people around me who thought I was crazy. And they're like, who is a stranger? But my mom was like, if he seems cool, like take a risk. It was just like, take a risk. I think I think everybody made it about the physical thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like how you let her in the house and what's gonna happen now. Yeah. Stuff. But nobody ever asked me nothing. <laughs> it's like, is she crazy? Is she a murderer? It's like, it was like, oh. I would sometimes have to tell my family and friends that. I'd be like, it's also risky for him. Like, I work from home, he leaves the house every day and I have the key to his home. Like, I could ransack this bitch. <laughs> Take you, everything he got. I'm glad you thought that way, baby. <laughs> like, it's sort of risky for him too, but you know, we're both being a little risky. We started talking about forever. Immediately, like, soon as, I don't say like, two, three months in, started talking about marriage and being together for a while. Yeah. I don't think that we ever avoided those conversations. On our first date, you were like, what are you looking for? Do you want to get married and have kids? And I was like, eventually, yeah. And you're like, then say that. Like, say that, like, this is what you want in your life. And and then you, like, you have to start from a place of honesty like that. I, mean, I always felt like it was comfortable having those conversations. Yeah. I never felt like it was like wrong or like, I shouldn't be talking about this, I was too early. Yeah. You know what I mean? I never felt like, and I felt like that before, and I just didn't feel like this with you. You know, coming in here, I know it wasn't easy for you, like moving in this house and trying to make it a home, wasn't nothing on the walls. Like you, you gave me space to be here and you were like, have at it. Like, mm -hmm. what do you need to do? And I think that there were times that that was definitely uncomfortable for you. Um, but you still gave me space to do that. I remember talking to my little brother a few months before I met you, and he's like, well, what are you like, what are you looking for? And I felt like I had a very simple short list. Okay, shoot. A career. Got that, come on. I said open to therapy, open to travel. I'm three for three. Yeah, you are. Black. Four. <laughs> I ain't miss you. Uh, family oriented. So those were the things that I feel like I would say like, that was what, the, I was like, those are straightforward things. And then, and like you said, five for five. Tall, well, tall, dark and beautiful. Uh-huh. I wanted her to be kind to me. Uh-huh. And I wanted her to be like a, a, a homemaker. I want to be married because I feel like 
you are my person I report everything to. You know what I mean? Whether it be good news or bad news, like I'm coming to you first. Mm-hmm. And I always want my best friend by my side. For me, it's like a, a crowning achievement. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, this is one of the best things I'm going to do in my life yeah. is marry you. It's not a question for me. It's just, you're my family. How does it feel to love a black man? Complex. I'm happy that I love a black man. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, yes, Scott. (laughs) I love someone and he's a dark skinned black man. Mm, I won, Mm -hmm. you know? I think that loving you has felt tough sometimes. When we talk about what it was like for you, after the murder of George Floyd. That's not something that's theoretical. Your experience of that was very intimate. It's not about like what it must be like to see the challenges, the racism, the violence that black men in America experience. Like that is right there for you and a part of your experience every day. And I like don't know always like how to be there for you when like the world is harsh and unfair and violent towards you. I can't take that hurt away. I can't take away the like complicated things that you were feeling in that moment. And it's tough to just be a listening ear sometimes and like not be able to help the person you love. And that's the sort of like complicated part. What's it like to love a black woman? Well, I feel understood and I feel heard. I feel safe. So it's funny to hear that you say like, you don't know what to do. You do everything just by being here for me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Sometimes I feel surrounded by who you are and your love. And I carry it with me every day. I feel, it feels great. Mm-hmm.